I'm here at UDS in Orlando, Florida, and I'm here with Mark Shuttleworth, the founder of Ubuntu. Mark, this is the uh, 1204 LTS Planning Summit. You announced earlier that the code name for this LTS would be Precise Pangolin, and you don't choose those names by accident. What does that code name mean to you, and what should it mean to users? Well, precision is one of our core values, and uh, this is an LTS. So it was just a unique opportunity to put those two together and, and just say it exactly like we mean it. Um, it, didn't, it wasn't easy, though. It took me longer to pick the name for this one than I think it's taken for, for any other. P is a, a really rich breeding ground for, uh, for, for, for adjectives, and there's some, some, some sort of wonderful ideas that we could have expressed. But at the end of the day, I thought you know, we needed to be very clear about exactly what we wanted from this, from this cycle. Um, the dreams and aspirations of, uh, of you know, a huge community of people hinge on this release, both you know, with, with a mission to bring free software to a human audience and also in the, in the mission to, to, to make free software um, on the enterprise, in the cloud, on the server, um, available on you know, profoundly different terms than, than it is today. Earlier this week, on Monday, in your keynote, you announced some pretty exciting goals looking beyond the 1204 release into 1404. You talked about having Ubuntu everywhere across mm. multiple devices um, that included the traditional PC. Can you talk a little bit about that announcement on Monday? Sure. Um, so 1204 is the culmination of two years of work, three previous releases running up to... Um, to, to 1204 itself. Uh, so the scope for change in 1204 is, is fairly narrow, but it's also a great opportunity for us to start looking at the next two-year cycle. Um, uh, it's become increasingly clear on the client side, when we talk about Linux for human beings, which is our mission, um, that the opportunity is there to bring that free software experience to a much wider audience, but if we're going to do that, we have to bring it across a much wider portfolio of experiences, portfolio of categories and devices. Uh, so that really, you know, this is really us setting the scene for uh, a series of conversations about what Ubuntu on these different categories would mean. We had amazing discussions this week with, uh, you know, folks from various companies and communities, all of whom sensed this opportunity. Uh, I think. Everybody's quite sanguine about the challenges. Um, uh, Ubuntu Core, kind of the, the engine room of Ubuntu, is unique in that it runs today on the hardware that, that is used from phones to, to high-end servers. Um, so we have a, a great start in that core. We have to figure out what we want to express to the user. And uh, I was really, really amazed at the way people came out to talk about you know, their interests Things, things that they've been working on, their ideas both industrially and from a consumer point of view. So I think it was a good start, but it's going to be a wild, wild two years. And uh, the only way we'll do it is with a combination of sort of concentrated, directed leadership uh, from Canonical and this amazing diversity and robust debate that comes from the community. Last UDS, you announced that you really wanted to reach that mark of 200, 200 million, million users in four years. Mm. In addition to servers, PCs, tablets, phones, mm. smart screens, how else do you see Ubuntu reaching the masses going beyond even 200 million? So we've seen with Android, we've seen how quickly a good platform can spread when manufacturers don't have a vested interest one way or the other. And, um, and you know, our, our goal is to take advantage of that to deliver a platform that manufacturers are going to love um, and users are going to embrace. Um, I think it's clear that design has to be central to that. We won't deliver um, we won't deliver something to that audience that really rocks their world unless we start from the point of view of saying it's got to be great, it's got to be beautiful. Um, but we really have some of that DNA now. You know, it's 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 been rough in pulling it together. But you, you saw the design sessions and how passionate people are about just getting it right, getting it perfect. Um, we have a, a, a group of leaders emerging who speak authoritatively about design, have 
clear ideas and increasingly they have the air of developers who want their stuff to be beautiful and functional and effective. Um, I think there's a growing recognition in the free software community that it's, it's not enough just to be stable and it's not enough just to be fast. And it's not enough f- from a platform point of view just to be virus free. You've got to be punchy and clear and beautiful. So we have that gene and uh, it's a question of you know, producing some focused, directed efforts around that. Speaking of those focused, directed efforts, one of the things that was brought up in conversation in some of the hallway tracks was it's been seven years. Mm. And the vision you had seven years ago when this project really got off the ground was revolutionary at that moment in time. It was a new idea. The announcement on Monday was was new and fresh and, and bright as well. What do you, like when you look at that vision from, from where you saw it seven years ago to where it is today, to where it will be maybe in another seven years, do you think the vision you have right now is as clear as, and concise and precise as what it will be, say, five years from now? Like, what do you think Ubuntu will be five mm. years from now? Um, so, seven years ago when we kicked off the project, it was on the basis of a view that the economics of software would shift. The economics of software would shift to services and therefore free software would have a really important role to play. Um, If I look at Android, you know, it is exactly that. It's a free software platform um, backed by a service portfolio. And so the real question for Ubuntu and for, 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 you know, more broadly all of GNU Linux um, is to the extent that we aspire to be a platform that human beings use every day, whether we can whether we can also deliver that that vision, which is a free software platform that's you know highly functional, highly usable, backed by a portfolio of services. Uh, in Ubuntu, we have the elements of that. We have Ubuntu One as a service framework, which other people can take and run with and use. We have Unity as a as an interface framework, which other people can take and evolve um, and we have me and the rest of Canonical totally focused on 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 delivering that and I think that needs to remain our focus um, the, the technology platforms are going to change dramatically uh, um, what what should be consistent throughout all of that is the spirit of the community which you know has this singular mission and has this I think very high class way of working you know, internally with itself, bringing, attracting new people and promoting those who, uh, who, who, you know, deliver the goods. Earlier this week, another announcement was made in addition to your keynote and what you envision Ubuntu being everywhere, and that was Ubuntu um, with HP's Moonshot project. Yeah. How important is that going forward um, to Ubuntu? Well, I think the Moonshot initiative is part of... Um, one of these major um, shifts that's happening in the data center. Um, and the shift is towards uh, parallelism rather than sort of thread, thread focused performance uh, or reliability. Um, parallelism gives you both performance and throughput, but does it in a way which tolerates um, you know, wildly different architectures, wildly different um, uh, levels of reliability in the individual node. And people are taking data centers and, 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 and re-envisaging them as these um, as, as, as highly dense clusters of you know tens of thousands or millions of, of nodes. Um, so Ubuntu fits beautifully into that. The same reason that Ubuntu you know works so well on the cloud. It's really lean, it's really tight, it uh, it uh, is very you know economically really efficient. Um, it's enabled on all of the hardware that people are considering for this. So I think that bodes very well. You know, whether it's x86 or ARM, uh, it's going to be um, intensely dense and it's going to be massively parallel. And uh, um, the individual performance or the individual reliability of any individual part isn't nearly as important as the economics and um, efficiency of the whole. In that world, uh, which is the moonshot world. Um, in that world, I think Ubuntu has a tremendous role to play. We're already 
the number one platform on, uh, on, on, on Amazon Web Services, the number one platform on, on Rackspace, which are, you know, have similar economics. And, uh, and I'm sure will be the number one platform for people who are building out large clouds. Um, so, so I think it's exciting. In mentioning the cloud, one of the other themes that seem, or sessions, I shouldn't say themes, but one of the more popular sessions at this UDS were the cloud sessions, the juju sessions, the charm session, mm. and even charm school. I don't mm. think the word charm school with, you know, five years ago people would have said it would have been associated with Ubuntu, but um, in talking to, to those folks this week, it's been really exciting to see the work that they're yeah. doing. and. Talking to people who test drove the cloud when you guys offered that, um, it was very positive reviews. What excites you most about Orchestra and Juju and the charmers, as they call themselves now? Right. Well, if I think of Ubuntu on the desktop, it's always been this feeling of clarity and precision. You know, we reduced everything down to one CD first. We, we made hard decisions about one great way to achieve a particular goal. We, um, we, we made it really easy for people to get started. And I think um, Orchestra and Juju are bringing that same focus both to the cloud, to service deployment, and to infrastructure, to deploying you know, tens of thousands of servers in one hit. You know, if, if it's 10 servers, if it's 10,000 servers, it should be just you know, the same amount of effort. So, um, so for me, it's, 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 it's almost as if we're finally starting to find a voice for Ubuntu on the server, Ubuntu in the cloud, that goes beyond, you know, Debian on a cadence. Um, it goes beyond the pieces, you know, and, and, and starts to create the idea of kind of a smart fabric for enterprise computing. Um, Juju, you know, really has that feel of clarity. You just say, you know, give me WordPress or give me um, a load balanced, um, web front end and um, it has that uh, rails like sense of not repeating yourself you know the system knows what you asked of it mm -hmm. so and it's never going to forget that so you can keep moving forward um, uh, it's you know it's interesting to speculate where that'll go but for now I think I think it's just delightful to see how excited people are about it and, and how much energy and buzz and kind of competitive rivalry there was between the Chalmers. I know when we were in Budapest last cycle, I sat down with the orchestra team and I said, what does this mean to end users? Just not sysadmins, they're like, well, it's not for just typical end users. However, that has changed in the last six months with Juju and these charms. I also test drove the cloud and was able to deploy a WordPress site in under an hour, a Drupal site in under an hour. So while there is that enterprise aspect of it, while there is that developer aspect of it, it is now reaching just end users, just people who want to deploy one site. Hmm. And then learning that Juju could be deployed on bare metal was pretty exciting as well. So for me, and for other people in the community, they're going, wow, this is exciting because we're, we thought it was only going to be for developers and enterprise mm -hmm. level. It actually brings it to the user. And that's another thing that, that in your vision seven years ago and, and how you've embodied it, Linux, for human beings, you did bring even the server down, you know, I won't say down, but you brought it to just regular end users as well. So thanks for doing that as well. Um, Throughout this, well, so yeah. so that's a really interesting point. You talk about you talk about you know end users deploying stuff. Um, uh, I I, th I think that is a, a part of the future. You know, already we have the personal cloud, um, Ubuntu One is an example. iCloud is another, and that's you know my stuff in the cloud, right? In the set of my applications that that get to it. But it's it's kind of like the cloud's relationship with me. But there's also a sense in which I want to be able to connect to and publish to the rest of the world. And right now, you're limited to doing that through, you know, other people's services, Facebook or Google Plus. And and it may well be that, in fact, people want to say, you know, give me my own, give me my own presence. Uh, it used to be that involved setting up a server and system administration. In future, it's it's much more like saying, you know, deploy that service, and. Uh, um, 
the pendulum currently has swung towards you know um, consuming that service from companies like Facebook and and uh, and Google, um, but there are some challenging issues there in terms of privacy and your ability to rent, maintain control of your own data. Um, so what if you could deploy the services that you wanted um, to the infrastructure that you wanted um, under your own control um, and do all of that you know, from the desktop without ever needing to be a Linux system administrator? That, that's a nice kind of personal vision for services in the cloud. And if we if we do a great job of Juju, then it uh, it it will be relevant as you know a cog in the wheel, you know, of the machine that makes that possible. It's very exciting to me mm. to see how this is all going to play out over the next cycle and, and beyond. Another thing that was new to this UDS was a leadership summit. Mm. You attended many of those sessions um, this week. What was the takeaway that you got from the leadership summit? Um, I was incredibly proud of the way um, leaders in the community have stepped up to the challenges that we face as we grow. Um, uh, when you start a project, you articulate a set of values and an idea, and the only people who will show up are people who are um, interested in the idea and believe, you know, and share the values. So some things are really easy. You know, bug reports are friendly because everybody, you know, has the same goal and has the same way of working and understands. Um, when the project suddenly grows and you have millions and millions of users, many of whom, you know, are perfectly entitled not to share the values of the project. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to observe the Ubuntu code of conduct, you know, just to use Ubuntu and, and be great at it. But if that's the case and you find a bug, you then have someone who, you know, hasn't bought into those values suddenly communicating on a bug tracker. Um, that kind of growth always challenges and stresses projects. Um, and what I saw at this summit was a whole group, a very diverse group of people with leadership talent step, stepping up to say, I love this project. I want it both to grow further and to retain its sort of core set of values. I think, you know, the reason that's exciting is because there's no way we would make it through this next two years to 200 million users to, you know, a consumer Linux for everybody on all of these platforms, um, unless we can figure out how to scale the community. And we won't scale the community, you know, with the same set of, same set of personalities, they'll just burn out. So it gave me a lot of hope. Um, I think there will be challenges, but we have a fantastic new community council we have a, um, a lot of uh, concentrated, organized energy. And I think we have the support of enough people to give it a go. I think you're 100% right. Um, on a side note, um, in reading some of the uh, new sites this week after you made your announcement, Stephen Von Nichols compared you, said that you were the closest thing Linux had to what Apple had with Steve Jobs in terms of your vision. What do you think about when people compare you or say that, that you're, you're our visionary for Linux? I think it's dangerous to put anybody on a pedestal. You know, I love reading about great, great people and I, I, I love reading about their flaws because I think, I think what makes um, somebody like Nelson Mandela great is the fact that they, you know, achieved what they achieved despite being human. And I think often we, we, we look at someone and we, we say, well, they're great, they must be somehow special, they must be somehow better than everybody else, they must be somehow better. The reality is, I think everybody, you know, you know has their vulnerabilities, their weak points, their, their challenges, and, and uh, um, you know, I'm perhaps I'm more conscious of those things in myself than than, than anybody else because I really do. You know, I really do have lots of uh, lots of challenges. Um, I don't think the the vision of one person is worth a damn unless there are others that are that 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 can um, complement that and get it done. I don't think one person with all of the failings that one person is going to have can get anything done unless there are others that will, you know, complement that. 
And if Ubuntu, you know, has has made great progress, it's because of all of those other people who uh, who get it done and get it done with such charm and taste. Mark, thank you so much for sitting down with me here at the 1204 LTS Developer Summit and going through these small announcements, well they're not small announcements, these big announcements that happened this week, looking at 1204, looking at 1404 and beyond. I'm excited, I know everyone here is excited, so thank you so much. It's going to be a wild, wild two years. Thanks very much for, uh, for your own leadership in the community. I, uh, I look forward to your weekly Ubuntu News email and uh, it's a great way to keep up with everything that's happening. Thank you. Stay well.